The focus here is the principles of play when we are the possession team, but the individual doesn't have the ball. The skilled players will look at things in the following order. They'll look at the player in the possession of the ball, then the opposition, then the good space, Next look at teammates and finally the ball. They're the order of priority that we should be focusing on. More often than not, we find ourselves concentrating on the ball itself. That should be the lowest on our priority list when we're looking at adding context to a situation. So when I talk about the player in the possession, this will help influence what you do off the ball. So where the player is in possession, and what particular environment they're, uh, they have the ball in, are they under pressure, so on. And that ties in with the next point here, the opposition. So when we couple the player in possession and the opposition, we start to add the relevant context to the situation. This helps us paint the picture. Okay, so what we're looking at doing is adding as much context as we can so that we can read the situation and move accordingly. From that point, once we've focused on the player in the possession of the ball and the opposition, we can start to consider where is good space. The good space here shown is purely possession centric. In order to properly identify good space, we need to add more context. So for removal of all doubt, we'll just add a goal here and we'll look at the direction of play. We're moving left to right. So once we add the context like this, the idea of space uh, remains the same, but the concept of good space will continue to change and develop. Obviously, the more contextual reference points we have, like as, as we'll continue into teammates, the ball and, and movement of opposition, that more contextual reference points that we have, the area will ultimately change. So we could also consider good space out here, if we're looking at advancing a particular move, we would look at good space. Now, if you notice, and I won't elaborate too much on, uh, uh, we won't get too far ahead of ourselves here because we are just trying to talk simply the basics here. But if we look at what happens with our teammates now, if we draw our attention to the point four on that list from the very start, then teammates, we can see what our movement has actually done. Now uh, we've created a big pocket of space for our teammate to move into and advance up the field. Again, if we're reading down our list, so the player in possession is the focus, the opposition, good space, teammates, and finally the ball. What we can do is just change the situation here again, just so we can add more, more reference points to it. So when we talk about teammates, it is important to remember that we need to move off movements as well. Okay, so if we both move into the same space here, uh, we've made ourselves very narrow. And what that means is one defender can cover the space and one can actually press the ball carrier, safe in the knowledge that they can't actually pass through us and find one of those players because there's a screening player. So what we've done there by moving into the same good space, because there was nothing wrong with the space that the players moved into if we just, uh, uh, if we go back there, absolutely nothing wrong with that it's just that because both players moved into that space we've given ourselves a very very narrow uh, passing opportunity here we don't really have an open triangle uh, of of options we've made ourselves very easy to screen and then the ball carrier is under immediate pressure so moving through here you can see the situation change from what we had before so the the player starred there has moved into the good space in terms of uh, moving on that's opened up some space on the left flank for our teammate to move into. Okay, So if we just change the context again, the opposition have moved, the good space has changed because there is no available pass through there. So we need to drop back in to provide an angle for support. Notice how the three players there have formed a, uh, a pretty neat triangle. The player's start is going to have to adopt, uh, adapt to their position in order to create a passing angle. And finally, if we look at some of the movement, we're talking about a free player here. We've got a 3v2 situation. So as the ball moves, the player in possession will change. So our points of reference will remain the same. We're looking at the player in the possession, the opposition, 
the good space in that situation, our teammates, and finally the ball. The more contextual reference points, the better picture you've painted and you'll know what to do next. Ultimately, off the ball, we're supporting free spaces and moving and thinking about our next move. So we're not standing still, we're supporting our teammates at all times. As the ball moves, you might become the most vital free player in that particular situation. So we'll just move that on. A player checks the reference points, so they've seen the player in possession and the opposition, and they've moved to good space. They are now the free player. They receive the ball, a defender moves with them, they're now the player in possession. So we check our reference points again, the player in possession, the opposition, and the good space and teammates. We don't really have to move too far to notice who our free player is at that particular point. Move the ball on, we have a new player in possession. So again, if we're checking our reference points as the, as the supporting teammates as we should be doing, the player in possession doesn't necessarily have a free pass at the moment, especially not now with the closing defender. So we're going to have to move. We've noticed the player in possession, the context is they're under pressure. They don't have an available pass because of the opposition movement. We need to find the good space. So if we make a run into the good space, we're now the free player and so on. I thank you very much for joining this short video. And if you've got any suggestions on future videos where we want to try and simplify some of the basics and simplify some more complex situations as we go. If you've got any other suggestions for videos that we can do, please comment below and we'll look forward to adding those to some videos as we go. And if you've enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. Thank you.